Bobby Hales was born looking rumpled in 1934 in hockey country, Avonlea, Saskatchewan. Not big enough to play the game, his grandpa gave him a coronet instead. At age 14, he moved to Chilliwack with his family and started playing in dance bands. When Bobby graduated from Chilliwack High, he turned to banking, but he still kept an ear out on Dave Brubeck, Miles Davis, and Stan Kenton. After three years, music won his heart, and he moved with his parents to Los Angeles and threw himself into music college. Bobby brought his music home to Vancouver and has never looked back. You were the backing band at Izzy's Supper Club for six years. What kind of shows went through then? We always had the relatives of the stars, Dean Martin's uncle, oh, yeah. things like that. Hello, yeah. Stevie Wonder we had. Played little, he was little Stevie Wonder then, we played him. Did you and we it? had Jack Jones and after, you know, people like that, when they first first started on, we'd get them to come in there. And we did a lot of production shows, girly shows, they used to call them, right? And the cave, your experiences at the cave theater. And I went in there as, as house band leader when they had acts in there. And then, Some yeah. of the acts that you worked with? You know, Sonny and Cher, uh, it's hard to name who you didn't work with. Mel Tormes and... and uh, Bennett? Tony Bennett. Uh, well, he, all the names, any big name that came to town and actually played the cave. I mean, the first act to work there as a sideman, I think, was the Mills Brothers. Well, I just thought, well, I'm really in... I'm really in seventh heaven now. These are big stars. This was going back quite a ways. And these guys were really popular. Bob, you got to play with Frank Sinatra. What was the experience like? Quite by uh, lucky accident. He, he was going on a tour after he played the P&E here, P &E here, and he didn't have his band together yet. So I got to put the band together for him. And it was just fantastic. I guess the first television special you ever did was the Shirley Harmer show. Oh, yes. Uh, I had strings. First of all, I'd never written for strings in my life. I got strings, and I got funny horns like alto flutes and, and you know, muted trumpets and that sort of, I don't know what, what bag was, just standard pop tunes. And I'm musical director, and I'm trying to play and conduct. <laughs> I can remember I said, this is hard. I was, but it was a, she was such a beautiful person, such a good singer. She was really great to work with. How did Let's Go get pitched to you? A rock and roll show to a big band guy. I don't know whose idea it was, but it was a, the rock thing was, just starting to happen. Everybody said, oh, it's going to go away. And, and I kept saying, no, I don't think this is going to go away. I think we're going to go away if we don't start finding out what's going on here, like all the jazz guys. And as it was, it got more and more popular. So somebody had decided, let's put these people on, let's have a look at them for the teenagers across the country. And these poor kids, I mean, you know, they I'd have to stand there and I'd say, when I point, just start singing. Don't, don't. <laughs> You just like go bang and sing, <laughs> it'd be fun. and it'll work. We don't have time on then and now to, to really document everything that you've done, but I would think that one of the highlights for you would have had to have been the, the closing ceremonies at the Olympics in Calgary. Only because you don't realize how important it is, you know, till you actually see the event and, and hear your music with what, what you've done and see what it's for and, and, and sit here and realize, you know, that's, what was it, a, what a billion and a half million people? heard that music? I might have beat Brian Adams, who knows? <laughs> the and best music that I ever appreciated was the Olympics. But I commissioned myself many years ago, and I don't know what year this was, to write a centennial suite. Nobody commissioned me, so I commissioned myself <laughs> for my big band. It was a half an hour long. It was like a long, bad dream. And, uh, you know, a lot of writing. And I can remember the, the, the last note of the suite and the climax of the whole thing and all the work I'd done. And CBC Radio recorded this thing. We did it at the QE Theater. It was packed, right? That's, I think, the biggest kick I ever had. It, it's just at that time in my life where I did something that I was really proud of. It, and I, when I heard this thing finally, it was just like it was a great relief. It's the biggest kick I got with, with, with my musicians at the QE. One more question. You sure you shouldn't have stayed in banking? Could have been big? No, no, no. I, I could have been big in Prince George now. I'd probably been the manager there. No, I, I, banking was a great training for me, a little bit of business, but no, 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 no. This is too much fun. In his glory days, Herb Capozzi was known as a swinger, a jock, always in search of la dolce vita. One of three children of Pasquale and Maria Capozzi, Italian immigrants, Herb grew up in Kelowna, where his father, who started with nothing, became known as the Merchant Prince of the North Okanagan. 
It was a, uh, an interesting city to grow up with, it grew up in because it, it wasn't a large city at that time. In fact, it was very close to probably a town is a better description. It had about four or five thousand people. And, um, it was a, 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 a beautiful city because it, it uh, always <clears throat> was a very progressive city and a lot of the immigrants that had, people had come there had come from Great Britain and had a great sense of uh, community uh, about them and uh, they had a very strong city council all the time with a lot of very advanced ideas and uh, um, built a, an, an excellent community. Was your father a great influence on your life? Yes, he was, of course, because he, uh, he uh, you know, had a great feeling about life and enjoying, but uh, in all fairness, I guess, certainly my mother that had the m more impact in that she was very much driven by a, a she, she made sure that we were not just going to go to school, but that it was very important to us to do well in school. My father's influence as a, as a figure was one where uh, he was always fun to be with, and uh, he was always sort of jovial enough to take us along to do things, and of course, uh, let us get away with a lot more, more than my mother would ever let us get away with. Like his father, Herb also became a successful entrepreneur. At first, sport was his business, then business became his sport. A star athlete in college, he went on to play football with the Calgary Stampeders and the Montreal Alouettes, and he was general manager for the BC Lions. As MLA for the Social Credit Party, he represented the influential riding of Vancouver Centre. He once even worked for the CBC. I went to university in Italy after I finished university in uh, Vancouver. And I had met with the, at the Canadian Embassy a uh, young fellow who uh, at the time was working with the Canadian ambassador. And they needed somebody who could speak Italian and knew Canada because the CBC had a great, wonderful range of programs that was called uh, The Voice of Canada, and uh, we used to beam shortwave broadcasts in different languages. My section was the Italian section, so I had a wonderful job of trying to keep Italy safe from uh, communism and uh, tell them all about the wonderful opportunities in Canada. They had tried, it was very interesting, I guess, the way things were in Canada. They had tried having an Italian that didn't understand Canada, and he kept sending back loon calls. Do you miss politics at all? Yeah, I don't think you miss politics, but uh, politics is a lot like a, an airline pilot uh, job, I guess. It's 90% boredom and 10% sheer terror. Not terror in a politician, but excitement. And uh, sure, you miss the 10%. You miss that sense of being close to the power, what it's like. But uh, some people say, why do people stay in politics? And of course, I say, it's, it's like making love to a gorilla. You can't stop when you're tired. You can only stop when the gorilla is tired. And so a lot of people stay in it <laughs> because they can't and don't want to get away from the excitement of being there. <laughs> Herb and a group of associates have bought International Potter's Distillery. And Bobby Hales is chairman of the board of Centerline Music Productions in Burnaby. Now